Okay, now let's address the second question. Determining how these forces with drag and thrust depend on the flying conditions of the aircraft. So far, only considered steady level flight. But there's other flight conditions we can consider, consider without having to delve too deeply into the aerodynamics yet. So some other conditions of interest is what we'll discuss now. So to give some reference for this, this comes from examples are from MIT Open Courseware, course 16.333, which is aircraft stability and control. And this is just from the first lecture of that course. So the first con condition that we'll consider is accelerated horizontal flight. So here we've got our aircraft. Here, let's go back to a simplified view of the forces. Typically, when we're talking about the flight velocity of the aircraft, we we'll use this symbol, V infinity. So here, the force balance in the horizontal direction gives us that the thrust minus the drag to have an acceleration, there must be a net imbalance here. And so we get M being V infinity dt. And just recall this would equal zero for steady flight. Uh, in the vertical direction, we again get the lift minus the weight equals zero because we're not considering any changes in altitude. So what this tells us is intuitively excess thrust is required uh, for acceleration. not an unexpected result. The next condition is steady gliding flight. So this is basically unpowered flight. So 
again, let's draw our aircraft. So, movement of the aircraft will now be downward at some angle. Gamma. So, V infinity is coming up that way. Now, by definition, lift is perpendicular to the flight direction. So, now we define the lift this way. The drag parallel to the flight direction. The weight force still acts downward. So now, if we consider a force balance, we get L minus W cos gamma equals zero. And here we can do a quick check. If gamma were zero, that means that V infinity would be horizontal. We would have level flight, and we would expect lift equals to weight, and cos of zero is one, so indeed. Good. So, the other direction, we get drag plus the weight times sine of gamma equals zero. So if we combine these, we get that the tangent of gamma is the drag over the lift. So what this tells us is that to have an aircraft that can glide effectively, we want a high L over D, lift over drag, as that gives a low gliding angle. And therefore, if you want to maintain a constant speed, and want to maximize the distance you can travel from a given starting altitude, you want to minimize this angle, gamma, and therefore maximize L over D. Next, let's consider a steady climb. Again, we've got our aircraft. There's our horizontal again. Now, the angle gamma is upwards. And so the infinity is pointing down relative to the aircraft. Again, the thrust. The lift is perpendicular to the flow, incoming uh, flow direction or the flight direction. The drag is parallel. The weight acts downward. And if this is an aircraft where the entire aircraft has had to rotate to change the lift like this, then the thrust will more or less be acting in the flight direction as well, as well. The slope of this line, we call RC for the rate of climb. Okay, so considering our force balance, thrust minus drag minus sine gamma times the weight must be zero if there's no acceleration. And lift minus the weight times cos gamma must equal zero. So if we combine these, we can say that thrust minus drag minus L over sine gamma times cos gamma. What I've done here is substituted this equation into this equation. 
must equal zero. And this means that tan of gamma is equal to its trust. over the width. So the tangent of the climb angle is equal to force minus drag, thrust minus drag over width. So for a small climbing angle, tan of a small angle is approximately equal to that angle and is also approximately equal to the sine of that angle. And that tells us that the rate of climb, the slope, is approximately v infinity times gamma. But from here, that's similar to tan gamma. So this is approximately f minus d over l times flight speed. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the rate of climb is approximately subject to our small angle assumption here equal to the excess power that's available because force times velocity has units of energy per time is power right force times distance is work the time rate of work is power so a velocity which has units of distance per time times force gives you power okay The next condition we'll consider is a steady turn. So now I'm going to draw a front view of the aircraft. Wings. Okay. Okay, so now vertical, horizontal, as before, the lift acts normal to the incoming velocity, the weight as always acts down. Now if this plane is turning, there's a centrifugal, or if we're in the reference plane frame of this aircraft, there's a fictitious centrifugal force. Acting outward. So first let's project the lift onto the vertical, which is L cos of this bank angle, phi. L cos phi. And let's just draw that again here. This angle is phi. This is R, the radius of the turn. Okay. So Centrifugal force, you recall from dynamics, is m v squared over r. So we get uh, that the in the horizontal direction, l sine phi is equal to m. V squared 
over r. In the vertical direction, we get L cos phi is equal to the weight. Now that's equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. So we can combine these two equations, get rid of the mass, and get that the tangent of the bank angle phi is infinity the infinity squared over r g and since the infinity is r times the angular rotation rate about the center of this turn omega then we can write that the tan phi is v infinity omega over g. So we can interpret this is that the bank angle is directly set by the turning rate. We'll revisit this much later in the course when we talk about maneuvering and controls. So, now this is really beyond the scope for the moment. But we can show that for the steady turn, additional thrust is also required for turning. Basically, the logic goes, as we've shown here, you need more lift than in steady level flight to overcome the bank angle. Thus, there's more drag. That's drag increase as lift increases and thus to overcome that drag more thrust 